Hello there and welcome to this tutorial on the simplified basics of diesel locomotion. So let's get started here. So what do we exactly have here sitting right next to us? Let me show you. So you can see the vast array of different knobs and switches that we have. So this one down here labeled reverser is our direction um, switcher. So it means if I put it into the forward position, the locomotive then when given power will then move forward and put into the for this backward position will make the locomotive run backwards. And then in the middle, then would be neutral. Then you have your power throttle. If I open this, you can hear the engine start to rev up. Now we're not moving because I put the reverser into neutral, so we're not going to move. But this is your throttle. Next here is your dynamic control. And what this is, is it, it's a braking system that is used um, by the wheels turning and it just, the wheels turning create electrical current and motors or um, whatever is on there um, will act as a brake and slow down the wheel. And you use the dynamic brake for very fine adjustment to braking um, it's 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 not normally used, but it it is there and it can be used. The two levers over here are the train brake and the locomotive brake. The train brake is pretty self-explanatory. It's it's the brake that acts on all the train cars that are behind you. There we go. So all of these train cars, all the way down there, is what that controls. And then the independent um, brake, or the locomotive brake, as it's also called, is, as it says as well, works only on the locomotive itself. So just this unit 8467. Um, so you would only use this, really, if you're, you're not coupled up to anything. Then once you're coupled up to a train, you're normally going to use something like this here um, to get the, the entire train to you know, stop moving. We also have some gauges over here. So let's go through these. These two are your brake gauges. We'll talk about these in a little bit. This is your power level indicator. I'm, I, I don't really exactly use this. Um, there's probably a more scientific name for it, but it does not have um, a lot of purpose and your speedometer right there we also are going to have some knobs here so you can see the headlights we have dim medium and then bright so since it is a little dark out I'm going to put them on to bright just like that let's see some of these switches are faulty switches Ooh. That's so that that's your wipers. You can see I already have going because it was raining out. And then these are these are for your headlights in the rear. Um, then you have your sanders here, which just drop sand in front of the wheels or behind the wheels, depending on which way you're moving. Um, and it allows it so then if your wheels are spinning, um, it allows the locomotive to get traction a little easier. Um, you do have um, a limited amount of sand, obviously. So you do. You just want to make sure that this is only used in emergencies where you need to use sand, like when the wheels are slipping, or you know you, you just need that little bit extra push of traction there. Um, you know where the locomotive is when the locomotive is going to be moving. Um, and you know the decisions it's gonna make so that's all pretty self-explanatory all right so when it comes to brakes 
I normally don't think of this red main reservoir white equalizing reservoir. Cause I don't really care about this. I normally care about this one here. And you'll see it because it says um, brake cylinder and brake pipe. And so um, I'll release the brakes here in a minute. And so the brake cylinder is the actual part of the brake that you know pushes out and puts the the horseshoe or not sorry, not the horseshoe the, the brake shoe onto the wheel and you know, starts to slow down the train car or the locomotive um, and white is the brake line so that's a line feeding to the brake cylinder so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use the keyboard command here but and you know, I'll just let's see there's this So that's me now releasing the brakes. And so we know they're released because the brake cylinder now has no pressure in it. So it means it's not being extended onto the wheel. And the brake pipe now has air in it. So then it's going to be primed. So then if I do decide, okay, well now I need to, now I need to put on the brakes. Oh, and look at that. And now the brakes are going to go on just like that until they're both even. Now, um, they both, you know, they all is both mostly work in this sort of fashion. Might be different colors, might read a little bit differently, but that's. So to get going, um, what we're gonna do is I put the reverse under forward, and I'm gonna do two toots on the horn to signify that we're gonna be going forward. Turn on the bell, which is right there. And then we're going to be ticking off the train brake, but we already did that. And then we can make sure that the dynamic control is also all the way off. The independent brake is, which it sure is. And now we're just going to open the throttle there. And you'll see the locomotive now starts to move here. Now, I'm not going to do this entire thing because you can see that it's 119 miles. Um, and, well, I don't exactly need to go that far just for a tutorial. Ooh, that'd make a good thumbnail. But, yeah, I hope this helped. Um, I'm not really an expert when it comes to diesel engines. I normally um, deal with steam. So, you know, I, I hope this helped in some sort of degree. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll do my best to answer them. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next one, nerd.